Valley football would look would, would look a whole lot different if Clay wasn't here. You're talking about a guy who works his butt off covering stuff. But uh, um, speaking of somebody who is working his butt off right now, it's Mike Gonzalez with K West. How you doing, Mike? Hey, how you doing, Jake? Thanks for having me. No, thanks for being on. Hey, Mike, you were at the Westlake East game, I take it, last week, right? I was, yes. Okay, tell me about that game. I mean, uh, you can, you don't have to go point by point because that would take too long. Uh, you know, but uh, <laughs> what was that like seeing Westlake East throw the ball? Because that's something you don't see with Burgett, 200 and some yards throwing the ball. Well, you know what? Uh, this is a team that every year it seems like they try to throw the football um, under Coach Burgett especially uh, the last couple of years with uh, Richard uh, with Richard Lefevre, who is 6'4", 240, and he's got great size and has a strong arm. But what really surprised me, Jake, is that to me it looked like they were playing more up-tempo versus years past, where they literally went the whole game, I would say about 90% of the game, uh, running uh, no huddle up-tempo, and Coach Berger would get the signals, and Richard Lefevre would take them and call the signals, um, for the snaps and it well the thing is what helps is that Richard Lefevre is a three year starter and so the the chemistry between Coach Burgett and, and Richard and, and Richard is a coach's son so he, he his knowledge of football is, is excellent and uh, and I think it really helps the team out especially when they're on the same page and it confuses the defense out and I have a feeling I mean I don't know I don't know if anybody has talked to Coach Adami about this but I don't know if they were prepared for that kind of style this quickly in the in this this um, first game of the year and uh, so that did surprise me a little bit and uh, they were able to rack up uh, over 500 yards um, and scored 62 points which I did not expect I, I expected this game to be so much more closer like last year last year was so competitive and it came down to the end and it took a, a defensive play by JC Vargas to uh, to save the Wildcats and uh, but no not this time this time the Wildcats just dominated from about the second quarter on, really. They got off to a little bit of a slow start, but once they got going, I mean, it was just uh, downhill for the Rattlers and uphill for the Wildcats. Now, looking at who they play this week, it's it's a different beast this week because um, McKellen Memorial comes in. We're not sure about their quarterback situation, but Mm -hmm. they come back. They come in uh, dominating Pioneer in the second half. What do you guys – that being West Lago East, what does West Lago East have to do to, to win this game? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, this is my first time. Uh, this is gonna be my first time watching uh, the Cal Memorial in several years, and, and I'm excited to see that exciting uh, running back uh, uh, Spates. Um, I know he's the younger brother of Trevor. Yeah, Campbell. And um, Campbell, Campbell Spates, right? He's a younger brother of Trevor, and so I'm excited to see uh, what his game is like. And I know uh, all around they have a. A great football team, and, and this is the reason why the Wildcats will schedule these kind of games because it really prepares them for district, and, and it is so true. I know every coach says that that well, we schedule non-district games because it helps us in district, but th- that fact couldn't be more true for the Wildcats scheduling a team like Sherryland, who's made the playoffs every year since 2008, and then McCown Memorial, who's been a premier power in the Valley for about a, a decade, also just like the Wildcats. And um, last year, both of these teams, uh, I believe it went into overtime. I wasn't at that game last year, but I know it was one of the more exciting games uh, that we had in non-district last year. And and uh, the Wildcats are going to need to probably polish some stuff from last Friday. But, I mean, if they can play defense the way they have, I mean, Jake, the defense hasn't allowed a single point. And I'm talking the first-teamers. They have not allowed a single point. Uh, in the two scrimmages they had, which was Brownsville Lopez, which was a playoff team last year, and uh, Donna North, uh, who looks to make a playoff push for the first time, and in Sherryland, they're not allowed a single point. They've shot out the three opponents. That's very, very impressive. So, I mean, a power like McCown Memorial, I mean, that's going to be a tough task. But if the defense could play the way they've been playing, where they have eight starters back, including their leading tackler, Freddy Cardenas, J.C. Vargas, who had five interceptions last year, and they have the front four back, including uh, Gerald Garza, who was uh, who uh, sustained an injury last year and, and missed some action. But he is a when he when he's healthy, he is a dominant pass rusher. And so with all that formula there, and then you have a defensive coordinator like Rene Guzman, who's been with the program since the, they began playing in 2002. I mean, this is one of the better West East teams 
that I have seen, on paper at least, since they began play in 2002. I cannot wait, Jake. It's well, going to be great. Real quick uh, on that is, uh, I'm sorry, we got Mike Gonzalez from K-West, Wessico's TV station, with us today. Um, McCallum Memorial on the Wessico East game you're talking about. It. You can actually watch it online on 956sports.com backslash watch. Uh, it's part of our. It's our new um, kind of like ESPN. Um, you know the Watch ESPN app. Um, we have one. We have a web page just like that. Kind of the same feel. So awesome. if you want to see that, you can watch that. Westlake East versus Westlake from 2016, I think, uh, is right. on there. Also, uh, we got some archive games. Harlingen versus Madison's on there. So you know, go on there, watch old stuff, watch this thing uh, that we're doing with Mike later on. But uh, Mike, we're, we're up against a break real quick, and I wanted to talk about Westlake. Westlake okay. didn't play George Ranch the first week because of uh, the weather. Uh huh. But they're going to go against uh, Marshall. Okay. What can we? What do we know about what Westlake is doing? Because new offense, you know, new personnel there. Yes. You know, and they're going against Marshall, who's coming to Bobby Lackey Stadium, and you know they're not. Uh, they're not an easy win by any means. Well, <laughs> though they're not. They're not. Um... But at the same time, they're not San Antonio Madison, uh, the old San Antonio Madison that came to Bobby Lackey in 2007. Uh, This is a team that the Panthers beat last year running the old slot key system where they racked, I believe they racked over 500 yards. It might have been 400, 500 yards, but it was a season high, and they did an outstanding job. And if you really think about it, they had to travel to San Antonio. They stayed overnight, and then they had to, you know, the the, the gruel of traveling can really take a toll on the team. Now it's San Antonio Marshall's turn. Um, don't know much about them. I know they beat Laredo LBJ by, I believe, three points. Really? Um, I, yes, I believe so. And um, But going back to Westlaco, as you mentioned, Jake, this is a team that, you know, they're, they're rebuilding. They, they are rebuilding with a new coach, uh, a new program, running, going from the slot T to a spread, as many know. But the other thing, Jake, is that they lost 41 players from last year to graduation. We have a... Uh, 18 lettermen back, uh, only two starters on offense and five on defense. So this is a relatively young team, a very young team, but with a lot of potential. When uh, Carlos Robledo and I were there um, for the scrimmage against PSGA High, it, that was uh, actually a, a, a scrimmage they had to reschedule because they were supposed to play La Jolla Palmview on a Thursday, but because of the Harvey situation, uh, they had to uh, cancel that one and uh, ended up playing Bears. On, on a Saturday, and, uh, and and the Panthers did pretty well. I mean, the control scrimmage, uh, they won 3-1, uh, to one, and uh, they had some playmakers there. Right now, the quarterback situation is up in the air. There's three quality quality players that can get the job done, starting with senior Marco Leal, who uh, is probably the most experienced one. He got a little bit of playing time last year. Uh, but they also have a guy named Elijah Banda, who does very, very well running with the football. You can also throw up, but watch out for him. Uh, running the ball, does a terrific job. I watched him spring ball. And then they have a youngster named Jacob Gavazos, who's probably the future of the Westlake Panthers, only a sophomore, but uh, can throw the ball, can run, very smart, intelligent kid. And uh, they have some playmakers, uh, one of them named Peyton Kanab. Uh, I-, I call him my personal playmaker because he's uh, he can run. He can use, He's used uh, in the backfield. Um, and also is used as a receiver. So watch out for him out in the flat area where they can dump him a little pass, a little pass, and he can make the play. But uh, I've also seen him use uh, they use him down the field and does a terrific job running the routes. Uh, you have another guy named Richard Olsek, who's a re- one of the returners from last year. Uh, got got a lot of playing time, but he can be dangerous too, uh, catching the football. But uh, they have a running back named Matthew Santiago, who's not very big, but can really really hit the hole very well and can run can run the football. And so it, it, I know you have talked, and I know what Greg Silver have talked in the past with Edinburgh Bella under Coach Michael Salinas that they run off the spread, and that we're getting a good glimpse of that, that yes. I mean, just because the, the Panthers are not in a spread formation, everybody's thinking they're going to throw, throw, throw. No, no, they're going to they're gonna run the football. And and they look pretty good, Jake, and I'm, ex- I'm excited to see uh, – this first game, and I think every Panther fan should be too. A, a great insight, by the way, because not a lot of people know about what the new Westlake team is like, you know. And so I, I'm impressed by uh, your knowledge. It's a, uh, it's incredible. <laughs> but we'll find out how, how you know 
how on the ball you are after this weekend. You know, we'll see how Westlake <laughs> yeah. does and Westlake go high. But Mike, thanks. We're up against a break right now. We got uh, Jason Wheeler coming on on the last block. Uh, okay. So we got to go to break, and then we'll be back with Jason Wheeler. Thanks, Mike, for everything. No, thank you, Jake, for having me. All right, love you, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> ditto. All right, bye. Mike Gonzalez from K West, Westlake's TV station. Great guy. He was the actual guy that named the Tinaco Bowl, but um, that pl- that thing that's dying, what's it called? A newspaper uh, did want to run with that, so I, I don't know sure what they call it. But Everybody calls he, it He that, coined though. it the Tinaco Bowl. Though. Good. So, But uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to have Jason Wheeler from the Pioneer Diamondbacks.